The date is the 20th of March 1992, and the time is 3.15pm. Now, Dad, um, you were born in 1922, is that correct? That's right, yes. And whereabouts were, whereabouts were you born? Well, I was born in Weir. In Weir. And did, were you born at, at home? At home. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And did your mother, uh, do you know if she had... She would have had the midwife with her. Oh yes, midwife, of course. Yeah. That was part of uh, the arrangement. Yeah. Always in the life mm-hmm. present. Do Do you remember anything about your early years? You know, when you were just still a young young child before you started school. Oh, I had a marvelous time. I, uh, especially with my old friend uh, Lois Ekstorich. <laughs> Yeah, was he the same age as you? Well, he was a couple of years uh, older, but we were, I was a great friend of his brother. Mm. And, uh, of course, Lozik always tagged along. Yes. And we played several, all various games, and we had fun. You all got up to mischief together? Well, you can call <laughs> that. <laughs> Oh, we used to go swimming in the uh, in the creek and yeah. and uh, as I said, played football, oh soccer, yeah, and various kids games. Yeah, and what what would you do in winter time? Uh, when oh, we snow? Uh, ski and yeah. uh, uh, ride on sledges and. Yeah. And skating. Ice on skating. Ice skating on frozen. Frozen. Did the little uh, did that little river in Via used to fr- that used to freeze up? Oh, we used to skate on the pond by oh. the by. Uh, there was a uh, flour mill, which was powered by the uh, water flow, mm-hmm. and they had a uh, reservoir or a mill pond. Mm. And that was frozen solid, about a meter thick of uh, ice. And um, we used to skate on that. Mm. Uh, About the ice. Bye, Sue. Have a good afternoon. Um, There was a restaurant just, just down the road from that mill. And they used to cut the ice and uh, put it in a specially designed building, uh, which was a, a freezer. In those days, there were no uh, electric fridges or, or mm-hmm. freezers, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so this um, uh, ice was stacked in uh, this uh, windowless. Uh, building. Was it under air? Was it dug into the ground? Partly. Yeah. And um, that was like a refrigerator. That ice kept solid till about uh, the end of summer. So this restaurant would be able to use this ice for... Yeah, that was only (laughs) for the restaurant. Ah. Uh And um, your father... He was working at the um, at the textile well, factory. He was the um, manager of textile, the textile mills, and I used to go and see him. Sometimes bring his his lunch or afternoon tea. Mm-hmm. Or I used to uh, get to know all the workers and the and the office staff. And you were the managers, blue-eyed boy. <laughs> and did, did he used to tra- Did he travel a lot at that stage, or was that later that he started travelling? Uh, in those days, he didn't travel very much. I, I remember when I was about five, uh, he took me to Vienna. Can't remember very much about the trip now, mm. but uh, we stayed about four days and uh, then went home what business he concluded or 
how much he sold of the stuff mm-hmm. he was supposed to say. Oh, I have no idea. So, right. who, who I, sorry, Dave, what were you going to say? Oh, that's for sure. That's okay. mm. um, and who owned, do you know who owned the factory? Oh, yes, so it was um, owned by a Jewish uh, fellow, mm-hmm. Joseph Rotter. Mm-hmm. And he had a, or part of the, the part of the factory was in uh, in Brno itself, uh, where Dad was manager, he was in Ria, mm-hmm. that was the actual textile mill. But the office part was in Brno, mm-hmm. mm-hmm. and uh, my father sort of alternate. He would have to. He would have to go down to Brno. Um, so your parents went to Bruno, I uh, went to Via, because of your father's yes, job in yes. the in mm. the um, as the manager of the factory. Yes. And where where were they living? Do you know where they were living before that? Were they living in Bruno? Oh, they had a place in Bruno, and we had a, a factory house, um, or well, house supplied by the factory mm. uh, in. Yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. D- Dad, before we go much further, what what were the names of your parents? Um, Dad was Dad's uh, Christian name was Yen. Yen. Yes. How do you spell like Hans. Oh, Hans. Yes. Right. That's in German. Yeah. And um, uh, my mother was Senka. Senka. Yeah. And what's, is there a translation of that? I don't think I thought your mother's name was Elizabeth. That was how I got my... That was her second name. That was her second name. Yes. Oh, right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And what was her maiden name? Novotna. And how, how do you spell that? Like a tennis player. Oh, okay. Nevertoma. No, 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 sorry. Yeah. No, what now? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay. Oh, you can check the spelling of those oh, words yes. and I write them down. So, when your father was at work during um, during the day and you were um, running mischief with your friends, and <laughs> before you started school, what what did your mother what did your mother do during the days? Oh, she was at home and she attend to her uh, bruise. Mm. Uh, uh, which my father hated. <laughs> he had a special name for it, which is untranslatable into English. Uh, and um, well, she cooked and she looked mm-hmm. after after the house and after the welfare. Um, uh, she had many women friends, and they used to come for so afternoon teas. Mm-hmm. Now, yeah. her brews, were they medicinal? Medicinal, yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, but she used to go, and during the summer time, she used to go to uh, forests and gathered all sorts of uh, plants and roots, and then she cooked them, and mm-hmm. I had to drink them. <laughs> <laughs> did, did your father take them as well? Did no. no, he, he refused. Didn't, didn't believe in cures like that. In fact, I can't remember him ever being ill. He used to get well, he was cold. Mm-hmm. Never stayed home. Mm-hmm. Worked camp first. Right, right. So, Dad, you sta- how old were you when you started school? Six. Mm-hmm. And wh- where was the school that well, you went to? Um, well, uh, that was in Bono. Yeah. And uh, at school holidays, which was in July and August, and then at Christmas and half year holiday, which was in February, mm-hmm. then Easter, we used to go to uh, Via on holidays. Sometimes we had to go early, uh, and uh, when I was in primary school, I 
uh, was transferred to the school in Weir, or primary school. Mm -hmm. Why was that? Because you were if Dad yeah. had to come, right. had to go to the factory okay. for mm -hmm. some reason. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and if he the needed, whole family then. right? So if he needed to be up at the factory and, mm. and be there for some time, mm. you would go to the school mm. there. Mm. Uh -huh. So where where did you stay when you were in Bruno? Oh, we had a f uh, apartment. Yeah, was that in the centre or out in yes. the suburbs? Right in the centre. Oh, right in. Yeah. Right near the main square. Mm. Oh. Mm. <coughs> it wasn't on that road that led from the square down to the train station. No, no. it was extension. It was on the other side. Oh right, mm. right. I remember around mm. there. Mm. And um, do you have any m memories of school? What it was like? Oh, uh, it was a uh, uh, secondary school. Uh, it was uh, and they, the name would be was called in Czech was gymnasium, oh, which right. is not translated. It was a high it was yeah. high school mm -hmm, mm -hmm. up to the uh, grade A, where you where I went to mm -hmm. was going to go to university. Right. So, Dad, you were at primary school for up until. How old? Oh, about 10 or 11. And then straight to high school? Straight to high school. And so you were at high school over up until... When, when did you leave high school? Um, must have been about 18. Mm -hmm. And... Um, do, you, do you remember what subjects you did? Oh, Czech and German mm -hmm. and maths. Physics. Did you used to like going up to um, Veer in your in your holidays? Yes, mm, it Did, was fun. But you would have had friends. You. So, Dad, um, you. I was asking you about. Uh, you you must have had your two circles of friends in in Bruno and in Veer. That's right. Yes. Mm. Yes. So you you. So tell me about the ones in, in Veer when you were at, at high school. What what sort of things did you get up to when you were at, at high school? You know, in terms of you. Oh, we used to go to uh, dances on weekends. They were always uh, one or two villages mm -hmm. had uh, dances, and uh, uh, mm, there was a uh, quite a gang of us. A yeah. uh, few girls, and we used to go on bicycles, uh, invaded the village where there was uh, some sort of festivities, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, um, oh, we used to have a have a nice time. Did you have a girlfriend? Oh yes, oh, I had several girlfriends. It was all uh, all so at the same time. Oh. No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> you used to have one, a special, a one special girlfriend, one or special. several special girlfriends. Oh, one at the time. <laughs> yes, yes, yeah, yeah. Now, is it true that you were in a, you were in a band or something, didn't you? Oh, well, in the student, uh, uh, we used to have a, a little band, uh, mm -hmm. but that was only. Um, playing for fun. Mm -hmm. We didn't get paid for anything. I don't think we were worth anything. Did you play the violin? I played the violin. Yeah. Mm. And would you play at school? At some uh, school? Sc oh, school gathering. Yeah, yeah. And after, after, after school. Yeah. And what about when you went up to Veer? What, what would you do? I mean, did you have a a group of friends up there that you'd get around with on bikes and yes, whatnot? Yes, it was the, almost the same as, as in, 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 uh, in Brno, but um, in, in Brno we, we didn't use bicycles very much. Uh, we used to go by train, mm -hmm. trams, uh, or trains to uh, Blansko, right. and that was very 
favorite spot for weekend uh, outings. Mm -hmm. There were weekenders and uh, usually had a dance floor and and uh, brass band used to play there. And, and you'd go for the whole weekend? Or if just I had somewhere to stay right. overnight, yeah. so in one of those weekenders. Mm -hmm. I went for a weekend. With your friends? With friends. Now, at that stage, had your father started to travel more? Uh, With his work? I think we, we, it probably increased, uh, his travel increased because there was uh, a lot more business uh, coming through from England and from Germany and from mm. Austria. So he travelled. And was he selling the text or he was selling the textiles? I, I'm not quite sure how it worked, whether they were offices, writers' offices in, in uh, mm -hmm. uh, apart from Vienna. Uh, they were in London, I don't know. Not quite mm -hmm. sure, but mm -hmm. he used to go to to England every so, so maybe once a year. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And would uh, would um, um, Stink go? Mum? Yeah. No. Oh, she didn't. No, she didn't like the idea of travelling. No. Did she have family? Uh. She, when she married Dad, uh, she was in her forties, mm -hmm. and uh, there was one brother. Yes, yeah, she had brother and sister. Mm -hmm. uh, brother was a tailor. He had a business in Brno, and uh, her sister married. An interpreter, and they live in Prague. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I went to visit them once or twice. Uh, no, she didn't have. I never knew her mother, mm -hmm. my grandmother, mm -hmm. grandmother, mm -hmm. or grandfather. They died before I was even born. And and what about on your father's side? Yes, I I, I used to know grandma. His grandmother. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And did he ha have any brothers or sisters? Yes, but I never heard anything about them. Whether whether um, they parted some funny way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, never heard much about. Them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But your father had been married before. Yes, and uh, he had daughter and son. And uh, daughter, her name was Olga. Uh, she lived in Brno. Mm -hmm. And uh, I used to stay with them. She didn't have any, when she married, she didn't have any children, so I used to go and stay with them occasionally. Mm -hmm. hmm. Is there anything else about that period? Any, anything that well, comes uh, to mind? When I uh, was in the eighth form, well, it's called it. Octava, mm -hmm. you know that. Yeah, it's like yeah. it's, uh, it's eight four. Um, I was um, enrolled. Uh, I had the university entrance, mm -hmm. and I was going to be uh, study medicine. So you had got uh, got an entrance into the medical school. Yes, into the medical school, into university, mm -hmm. and. Uh, but I couldn't go because at that time Hitler invaded Czechoslovakia and closed the university. So what year was that? Um, Thirty. Nineteen thirty-eight. Yeah. 
Well, it would have been before the outbreak of the sec of the of the war. Would have been a little bit before then, wouldn't it? Yes. Yeah. It must have been mm -hmm. So where was the university? Was it in Brno? In, in, in Brno. Yes, in Brno. Right. Mm -hmm. right. So what what did you do then, Dad? After you'd found out that you couldn't get into oh. after the universities closed. Well, what happened when when Hitler invaded Czechoslovakia? Oh, it was quite an upheaval because uh, uh, he occupied, um, first of all, he occupied the Sudetenland, which is a border, uh, a strip of land where all the um, guns were deployed. Yes. Uh, um, in the border. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The border between Germany, Germany and, and Czechoslovakia. Well, here, uh, German forces occupied that uh, border line with all those guns pointing towards Germany. And they were useless because they went, uh, they made the same tactic as when they occupied later. Uh, Belgium and Holland and France. They went around, over, yes. around back yeah. mm -hmm, mm -hmm. through the back door. Right. Oh, so that's how Czechos uh, Hitler came to invade Czechoslovakia. Mm. Oh, right, it was actually it was uh, given to him by the president of uh, Czechoslovakia, who was. Uh, almost a figurehead after. Uh, first of all he occupied the uh, Sudetenland and then he occupied the whole lot. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So the um, the Prime Minister of Czechoslovakia Czechos gave, yeah. President, mm -hmm. gave him Sudeten, Sudetenland. No, well, just surrender. 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 Sudetenland. It was very dramatic uh, part of... Uh, and Dad, did you yeah. know, did you know uh, were the Czechs fighting the the Germans? No. No, it was a no. peaceful. Uh, no. Well, the invasion went without without a f uh, resistance. Shot being fired. Mm -hmm. But yeah. if I c when I couldn't go to university, I um, in my uncle. Mm -hmm. uh, had a shop, a watchmaker shop, and uh, uh, he took me as an apprentice. So that uncle was your mother's brother? Yes. yes. Oh, that must have been, yes. I forgot about this other brother who was a jeweler. Uh -huh. And um, I was there learning watchmakers, watchmaking, jewelry trade. In Bruno. In Bruno. Mm -hmm. And um, at the same time, I joined the uh, resistance movement. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, we carried on sub uh, on uh, meetings and uh, organized. It was very early organization of subversive. Activities against the Germans. Against the Germans. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And what sort of subversive activities did you used to do? Oh, like um, uh, organizing. We uh, had a group, so our little cell. Mm -hmm. We organized. Uh, Context with uh, uh, England and also with Russian forces, and but there were, that was uh, not very predominant because Russia was invaded shortly after, uh, so we couldn't get much help from them. Uh, but uh, the organization. Uh, focused more on English help mm -hmm. and uh, 
we used to get we had connection with uh, Czech army that was formed in England and um, uh, we used to get the messages what's happening uh, to to us to check in the check to check favor uh, establishing uh, a government in exile in in England. Oh, okay. So I just check clarify this that I understand. Mm -hmm. You would get the people in England, the Czech. Yes. Uh, the Czech was a Czech army formed in yes. England. Yes. You would. They would send you information mm -hmm. about what was happening in England. in England and vice versa. And we supplied information to them. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And that's at that stage I was um, had some assignment which I had to carry out in later years mm -hmm. uh, to when we couldn't rely on the wireless messages, mm -hmm. or radio messages, yeah, yeah. Um, I had to take messages over the border through Austria to Switzerland. Uh -huh. And from Switzerland you could send the yes. message? because Switzerland was neutral. Yes. And then you'd have to travel back to Czechoslovakia. Yeah. Right, right. So, this Czech, the Czech government in exile, well, they were trying to set up a Czech government in exile. Oh, it was they, already they, set they up. They did set it up, mm. right. Mm. And what, what were they doing? What were they trying to do? The, Keep the world aware of what was happening yeah, in Czechoslovakia. Yes, yeah, and um, sort of establish a connection with the um, British Army, mm -hmm. and uh, eventually uh, with the Americans. That uh, in 1945, Americans actually came to uh, liberate Czechs. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, what did your parents think of your involvement with the um, with the underground? Did oh, they know? They they weren't very happy about it because it was uh, risk involved, especially when I left, when I uh, went to Switzerland for the first time. Mm -hmm. I was scared and because I've never left home before mm -hmm. and I was virtually led by my by hand mm -hmm. over the border and, and from Austria to the to the border. Did you go with did you go with somebody who was more experienced or did you have to go by yourself? I had to go by myself but I was passed on. Okay. Other people. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And was the presence of the Germans very strong? Like there were Nazi guards oh, yes, everywhere, yes, and, and they were they checking up and and checking up and and um, gathering Jews and taking them away and mm -hmm. and uh, um, eventually my uh, my father's boss. Mm -hmm. He was taken away, and um, there was a German manager, and uh, those people in Weir, some of them were uh, taken away. And the people that worked in the factory? Mm -hmm. And uh, also in Brno, there was mostly Jewish uh, office staff. Mm -hmm. And they were taken away. So. so there were people that you knew, you know, that you must have had a close Personally, association yeah. with all yeah. through your life. Yeah. They were taken, taken away. away. And how did that? 
You know, how, how did you feel? Did you feel angry or...? Yes, I was very angry and, and uh, upset over the... over the, what, what was happening to mm -hmm, mm -hmm. the country and to the nation. That's why I was more uh, enthusiastic of to the fight. That's how you, and so you, uh, that you took that under, yeah. So um, it was sort of a, a part-time job after hours. <laughs> So I had to I had to be in the in the workshop yeah, in the shop yeah, yeah. during the day, and uh, it was quite stressful. So how did you um? How did you go to Switzerland? Did you go on the weekend or something? Oh no, I just took off. Oh. Took, took the time off. Right. And uh, and uh, I got it in mind. See, so it's a yeah. Yeah, right. But I mean, people who you you were associated with were would have been in danger as well, I guess, from your yes. association mm. with mm. with the underground. Dad, did you have friends who got who were got who were caught? Mm. Yeah. And mm. were they sent away or were they killed or? Oh, or so, uh, some were put in jail, and mm -hmm. uh, I was uh, I was uh, in jail for. I was uh, apprehended by, by Gestapo and uh, and uh, put in jail, but uh, it was they they couldn't prove anything. Well, I had uh, friends, uh, a lawyer, yeah, and uh, with the help of uh, a certain lady. Girlfriend, <laughs> uh, yeah. I got out. Yes, and uh, uh, the, some of the uh, students from the university were the same. Uh, it uh, it wasn't actually jail; it was a uh, a school building, mm -hmm. but it was heavily guarded and barbed wire everywhere. Right, right, and. Uh, uh, there were shots heard when mm -hmm. the students were sh some of them were shot. So the them. the university has had been opened by that stage. Where there was the only only German. Uh, if I uh, went to German university, I could have gone. No German part of this. University was open to oh, I see. everybody, I see. I to see. Czechs and Germans. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But um, my father and mother didn't want didn't me to go to university. You know. At that time, I was quite pleased that I didn't have to, because I was interested in studying, mm. well, I, because I was yeah. involved in other activities. Extracurricular activities. Yes. Dad, um, how did you get apprehended by the Gestapo? What, what were you doing? Oh, we were trying to blow up a bridge. Yes. Yes, and we we actually did blow it up, but it failed. It didn't blow up where we wanted, and. Uh, uh, it was only part of it, mm. and um, there was um, German soldiers were guarding it, and um, as we were running away, they they must have called uh, mm. uh, reinforcement, but I I I hid in the. And, and a side, sort of a side road, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and uh, I pretended that I didn't have anything to do with it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And they caught me, but I was just passing mm -hmm. through. And uh, but that wasn't that wasn't acceptable at that time. They, mm -hmm. they just bundled me up and uh, took me with the rest. Right, but, right. But uh, uh, this lawyer 
and friend had to get out. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So that jail was in Brno. That wasn't was uh, that was a, a high school that oh, was taken right. over. Yeah. Uh, not a university. A high school that was uh, designed as uh, as a jail. Mm-hmm. In Brno. In Brno. Yeah. So when you travelled to Switzerland, how did you used to get there? Oh, by train. There was still the transport was running on. And what about getting over the borders? I was taken over. Mm -hmm. By connections. By by people that you knew were sympathetic. Well, I didn't know them. But you'd make little signals to each other or something. I was usually waited for. Yes. So, Dad, what sort of messages did did you take? I don't know. Oh, you don't? Oh, right. Okay. I don't. So. They must have been very important, mm, mm. and uh, they were never written. In the, it was uh, was in code. Mm-hmm. I have to tell you. Mm-hmm. It was it either in the form of a poem, mm-hmm. and uh, or a description of? Uh, a countryside or right right uh, or mm-hmm. a letter from uh, a boy to a girl right right very 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 right. insignificant right right significant but what what sort of information would would they they have been sending out i mean okay so they would have been sending out information what it was like in Czechoslovakia but would it have been information about like how many um how many guards there were at a certain location or yes it must must have been, have been about been. information about strategic yes all points. that it all that mm-hmm. was incorporated in mm-hmm. and uh, there were some messages were going through uh, for uh, by radio mm-hmm. the Morse code, but uh, what I had to take was obviously more important than mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. more secret than. Did you have any, any? Did you have any close close calls during those trips? We you know. When no. They all always no, used no, always no, used to no. go quite smoothly. Mm. Mm. So you could have left. Well, I, it, so there were no no limits at that stage of people leaving Czechoslovakia. You could travel in and out. I could travel to the border. Yeah. Without uh, any problem, mm-hmm. but then uh, the the rest was taken over by other people. Sometimes I wonder why I couldn't have left the message with the person who picked me up. Yes. So, well, h- how did you get across the borders then? Well, that, that, was, that wasn't my problem. That was the persons who picked me up. To get and you across the border? To get me across the border. So, you would have had to have climbed fences and that business? Oh, oh, to get over the border? Was, uh, or did they used to have papers organised for you? Yes. Papers, and sometimes we had to cross, uh, uh, go in a uh, certain uh, part mm-hmm. uh, where it was known that it's not going to be guarded. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, Dad! It <laughs> must have been, all must have been, very nerve-wracking. Oh, no, it wasn't easy. No, no. So how many years did you do that for? A um, number of years. And there was there were other people who mm-hmm. uh, did the same. I went about three or four times in the whole period between um, since about forty, nineteen forty. Yeah, about 44. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So what happened to the Czech army in, in England? Eventually they... Um, they were mostly pilots. Mm-hmm. Um, the ground army uh, 
was very small, it was only uh, a, a unit mm-hmm. that came with the occupying forces. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But uh, the pilots, they were engaged in bombing, but not bombing ships. No, they w- so they were collaborating with the British? Oh, yes. Yeah. Well, that was, mm-hmm. part, uh, that was mm-hmm. a unit, uh, part of the uh, English Army, mm-hmm. British Army. Mm-hmm. Uh, they had the British uniform, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Right. only little right. insignia on and the whole thing. Mm-hmm. Like other, other forces, like Polish, oh, right. Mm-hmm. Right. Hungarian forces. You know. mm-hmm. So, Dad, did you form close friendships with the, with the people that you were involved with the underground with? I mean, they must have been your the oh, group they were of people. Um, they, they must have been almost like family because you would have been through some. And you would have been, or was it? Was it? Was it quite split? Was it conflict no, within the group? No, um, uh, that was very close because we didn't know we were going to be here tomorrow. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, eventually, this were they female? Female no, and men. Yeah. Oh yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And um, eventually we were, there was, um, when the Soviet army was advancing so quick, so fast, over uh, Ukraine and Poland and, and, and part of Slovakia, um, we got a, a Soviet instructor. The whole unit. Yeah. We had a Soviet instructor, and uh, we were under his command. Was had the war finished? No. Oh right. No, okay. We were preparing for the. Um, so they, that was to prepare you for. Um, well, that was to help you fight the Nazis. Oh, we were always fighting Nazis. Yeah, but but I mean, the, I mean, it seems ironical that you ended up. Fighting, like you were fighting the Russians, you were fighting and invading. No, we didn't fight the Russians. And, uh, sorry, you, yeah. but you were fighting the the Nazis because they had invaded your country, mm-hmm. and then the Soviet Union was also going to invade your country as well. Oh, well and they, here they were collaborating with a group like yourselves, the Soviets. Yeah. Well, that yeah. was. The Soviet Union in England were allies. Uh, yes, yes, yes. Yeah. So it didn't matter whether we were yeah. under English command or American command yeah. but or Soviet command. Yeah, but the way that the tables turned in the end, mm. it's ironical, mm. isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it is. Mm. Yeah, because it was actually the Soviets that ended up invading and oppressing Czech- Czechoslovakia. Uh, well, part of it. Yeah. Mm. The eastern, eastern part of it, just mm. like uh, and, uh, well, when the... So, so you ended up with a Soviet yes, instructor? and, and that, uh, well, we were doing mostly what, what we <coughs> wanted to do. <coughs> what we wanted to do, mm. what we... Oh. What we consider was right. Mm. <coughs> and um, he was there more, more or less like an con- uh, observer. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And um, eventually, um, the Soviet army came to the north and occupied the almost whole Moravia. And they were going so fast in German. We fled towards Germany and right, right. And that was 1945, and the, and the war was closing, coming to an, coming end. To an end. Right, and, right. And, um, so all the all the Germans were retreating back to Germany, and and you knew that the Soviets were 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 approaching, mm. but the Soviets weren't seen as an enemy, though. No, no. No, they said that was there right. Was, they right. were liberators. Mm, mm. Mm-hmm. 
So, uh, and so tell me about this group of friends that you had. What, what ended up happening to them? Oh, some of them left Czechoslovakia, like uh, I did, mm -hmm. uh, shortly after the war ended. Some went to uh, Germany, to, uh, to camps for uh, refugees, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and some flew directly to England. See, when, when the um, Czech boys from England came back, some uh, to Czechoslovakia, um, some brought, some got married and mm -hmm. brought English girls right, to live right, in right. Czechoslovakia, but m most of them went back to other left illegally mm -hmm. or uh, or having a, a an English wife mm -hmm. was almost. Yeah, that would be yeah, a, easy, easy, and, easy and, mm -hmm. and, uh, and they settled in England, and some went uh, to Germany, uh, to camps, and went to Canada, mm -hmm. went to United States, went, went to South America, mm -hmm. Australia. So, Dad, going back to the to when the Soviets were, were approaching. Oh. That was 1945. Yeah. So, when did you go to Switzerland? How does that fit into the whole scheme of things? Well, I, I went to Switzerland mm -hmm. for the last time shortly before the war ended. And um, I came back because uh, we were promised from England mm -hmm. Uh, that we will be awarded uh, monitoring for all our mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. work we did for mm -hmm. liberating Czechoslovakia. I came back and I saw the mess after the Russians have invaded mm -hmm. or liberated us. Mm -hmm. um, I sort of uh, stayed for uh, several months, mm -hmm. and then I, because I, I was entitled to a Czech passport, mm -hmm. I found a job in in Switzerland, and um, because by then I had several friends in Switzerland mm -hmm. and the Swiss people, mm -hmm. and I wrote to them that. If they could find me a job, I got the reply, went to the proper uh, government office, mm -hmm. I got an exit permit. But was it under, I mean the Soviets had invaded, but was it communism? No, that stage, no, it that was uh, yeah. uh, the, the president from uh, England uh, came with the army, the Czech army. and Churchill? No, Benish. Benish. Benish was the president. In that time. President of Czechoslovakia. Czechoslovakia. He was elected. He was a foreign minister on in the Czech army, mm -hmm. uh, Czech government right. before they left. He he left um, before the Germans came. Oh, I see. And he was in England. And he was in England. Oh, and he was behind all the. Uh, the, the former okay. political right. minister mm -hmm, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. uh, so he came back and established democracy mm -hmm. and uh, I I didn't like it so I found a job in Switzerland as a watchmaker mm -hmm. and got a passport Check passport. Check passport, which I still have. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Right. And, and, uh, and you hadn't had a passport before then? No. no. So, Dad, you said you travelled back to Czechoslovakia from Switzerland, where you had been living yeah. for a while. Yeah. And it was a real mess. What sort of a mess was it? Had there been a lot of bombing and 
Oh, the mostly political upsets and uh, the um, uh, oh, it was politically it was a mess. It was a mess. Yeah. Well, I guess Czechoslovakia was trying to find itself after six years of occupation. That's right. Dad, what were your parents doing at this stage? Oh, Dad retired. He had long, long retired, and mm -hmm. uh, and he was living in the air. He, he had to surrender his um, house in. Oh, I don't know whether he had to, but he bought another little house with you. To see. Oh, right, right. And uh, uh, here they mm -hmm, mm -hmm. with my mother. Right, right. So they moved to Vienna permanently. Permanently. Some during during the war. During the war. Right, right. And how did they cope cope with it all, Dad? Well, I didn't see them very often. Um, once I became engaged in all these um, activities, mm -hmm. didn't mm -hmm. want to put them into any stress, so I mm -hmm. didn't tell them very much what I was doing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It must have been hard for them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I guess you were just protecting them. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So then you went to Switzerland. And that's it. that was, um, uh, I Live there happily mm. and uh, planning for the next move. Now, and after you left for Switzerland, that's when that was when communism. Yes, well, communism. I was living in Switzerland. The uh, takeover by communists uh, took place, mm -hmm. and I decided not to come. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, my father. Uh, my mother had died, yes. but I didn't. I couldn't go to her funeral because it was uh, quite hard. But I went back to see my father, yeah. and uh, he was getting old. And he sold the place in here and went to live with his daughter, mm -hmm. my sister. Mm -hmm. And so how did you get back into the country and to Czechoslovakia then? Well, I had, I had a passport. Oh. Valid passport. But once you were in, it was no problem about getting out again? No. You could do that? Oh. I had exit. I, I didn't have to get permission to come in. Go into oh, the country. Gone. But you didn't have to get permission to get out of the country no, once you were there. I didn't in. have to. I had visa uh, for Switzerland, which was still carried. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And an exit visa, an entry visa. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. there was no. You were all. Well, it was all on the door. Mm. And what was it like going going back to Czechoslovakia after it was under communism? It wasn't under communism. At that oh, time. oh, it's still under communism. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, it was still, they were still improving or trying to improve, but uh, mm. the communists were getting stronger and stronger and the eventually took over. Yeah. So, what what year did your, what, what year did, um, did Nina die? My Nina, your, your mother. She was died during the war, at the end of the war. Mm -hmm. I can't remember. Uh, I have a, I have a fun document, mm -hmm. but then um, Dad died, and I couldn't go back. So, so that was when it was under communism. Mm -hmm. Did and you hear from your stepsister? Did yes, she write to yes, you? Yes, she, she wrote to me. And shortly after, she died. Mm. And she lived in in Vienna. Oh, in Vienna, yeah. in one of the suburbs. Right, right. Mm -hmm.
Dad said that he never ended up getting any monetary return, that it was all for nothing, that he still feels bitter, that he was very bitter about it, and he still feels bitter. But it was, yeah, that it was all for nothing, and his, he had friends that just would go off on a mission and would just disappear, they just would not be seen again. He did get, there was some ribbon and letter that he got given at a little ceremony at the town hall when there was a Czech government reinstated after the Germans left. And he wore it for a little while, this ribbon, but then in the end he just took it off and threw it away, just thought, for what? What was the point of wearing that? He felt betrayed. Then, after he went to Switzerland, and he had arrived in, after he went to Switzerland, and then later went on to Melbourne, he thought it was such a backward country, just everything about it, and he was thinking, why? So, you were 24, and when you arrived in, arrived in, in Switzerland. That's right. And, um, did you find work, oh, did you find work there? Oh, I already had a job. Yes. That was uh, arranged before I even left Czechoslovakia. And what um, what, was, what was the job? Oh, in the jewellery and watchmaking mm-hmm. watchmaker's uh, shop. Uh, I could have worked in the factory uh, assembling watches. Was, was Switzerland was booming at, the, at that time after the war. Mm-hmm. Uh, watchmaker's the hard to come by it wasn't enough of local craftsmen, so they were very pleased to have me. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Dad, whereabouts in Switzerland was it? Um, it was in Basel. Yeah. Basel in French. Mm-hmm. And were there many Czech people that were that were there? Did you have a Czech community there, or were you? Uh, uh, no, the the boarding house I I stayed. Uh, there were several pastry cooks they, uh, uh, later in the year. They used to come uh, on three months uh, visa to uh, study uh, fancy pastry cooking. Mm-hmm. And, uh, then after three months they had to leave. Mm-hmm. Right. Our dad, uh, you were married when you were in, in Switzerland. Um, and during during that time, um, oh, is there any, well, is there anything that um, that you remember about your life or what you used to do in, in Switzerland? Oh, I used to uh, have a bike and. Uh, I used to go on uh, uh, a long trip, all trips over the weekend, and went down to Lucerne and Zurich, and and was with a friend uh, who also came as a watchmaker. Uh, and um, used to have a good time. I used to go to dances um, yeah. on Saturday night. Dad, did you travel in in Europe? Did you go to no, no. I only went to France in one occasion with uh, friends, a few friends from uh, the boarding house, and that wasn't very much. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Only a long weekend. And, uh, right. So, Dad, um, what made you decide to leave Switzerland? I always wanted to go to South Africa, so um, that was uh, uh, an opportunity to go to English Consul, where Rhodesia was, uh, in those days the name was Southern Rhodesia, the climate was uh, very good, and uh, so I wrote to an English consul, with the help of consul 
in Bao, I wrote to a consul in uh, in Bulawayo, and uh, eventually found a job. Mm-hmm. Uh, one in Bulawayo, and. Bulawayo, was that the capital of Rhodesia? That was capi- capital. Mm-hmm. And the other job was also somewhere in Rhodesia? Yes, in uh, one of the bigger, yeah. uh, one of the main cities. There were only two cities in the whole country. Mm-hmm. That's what I was thinking about. And um, I thought, I'll get a foothold in South Africa that way, and then eventually go to the South African although it was a state of South Africa. Mm-hmm. And um, and I applied for the visa. The visa wasn't coming, wasn't coming, wasn't coming. And a friend, uh, oh, we, we used to go biking and dancing, said, oh, uh, what about coming to Australia? Oh, I'm negotiating with the International Refugee Organization and uh, it would probably be quite easy. Mm-hmm. So I thought, well, why, why I'm waiting, why, why not? So I applied and we both went uh, and down to Geneva for an interview and uh, that was quite easy to go to uh, Australia, mm-hmm. where we went. And, um, so was it a boatload of, of refugee people that yes. had achieved this refugee status? Yes. Uh, and uh, so we, uh, we went, we, we travelled by ourselves to uh, Italy where we spent about six weeks. Mm-hmm. In in Naples and and uh, then we joined the boat and went to Australia. The boat did the boat go direct? Oh, they stopped oh, in Suez, Suez yeah. and mm-hmm. and then uh, stopped in Ceylon and uh, then stopped in Perth. And eventually in Melbourne, where we disembarked. And uh, I had a job. I had several jobs in Melbourne, and the unfortunate part of it was that uh, it was right before Christmas, and um, Dad, did you get these jobs when you got to Melbourne? No, no, I had them. Uh, I wrote. Uh, on the boat and post, posted them from Perth. Uh, got the addresses from Switzerland. Mm-hmm. Also all prepared. So as I said, it was a holiday or well before Christmas. By the time I got to uh, see these people, the everything was up for Christmas. Three weeks. So, um, I was interviewed and the job, mm-hmm. the job was mine and start on the payroll was getting money every week. So that was after Christmas? It was after Christmas, but mm-hmm. uh, when the time came uh, to start, uh, I had an offer from Aubrey, which was mu- much more lucrative. Mm-hmm. And uh, it was already in New South Wales. I didn't want to stay in Melbourne. Uh, and um, that was uh, and just a step to get to Sydney. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I took the job. It was after Christmas. And um, I lived in a boarding house. No other... Uh, uh, New Australian, as they used to call us, New Australians. 
know how to ask me Australian group day, so yeah. I was uh, getting good practice in English. And Dad, um, what, what did you think, what were your impressions of Australia when you arrived? I couldn't get over where, where I landed. <laughs> oh, I just can't des describe it, it was terrible. Well, coming from Switzerland and st stopping in Italy, uh, I, I saw what, how different it was even from Czechoslovakia. Mm -hmm. And uh, arriving in Melbourne, it was like a hick, a hick town. And, uh, and going to Albury, it was even worse. Mm -hmm. It was like a village. A wide street, a horse buggy and few cars. But I got used to it, and the work was fine. And Dad, did you did you get lonely, or did you um, get home? Were you homesick? No, no, I wasn't homesick. The only thing I regretted uh, that uh, I didn't wait uh, for the visa. Mm. I thought, well, it might have been a lot better. Probably wouldn't have. Been. Mm. Dad, I remember hearing some. I remember some story about when you arrived in Australia you just had a pair of, you were given a pair of pants and a jacket. Oh, everybody got that. Uh, that was in, uh, uh, in the, the camp where we landed in, uh, or in Melbourne. Mm -hmm. And everybody got that regardless what you had. Uh, there was another medical mm -hmm. and uh, and this outfit which I didn't wear. You would have uh -huh. had your own things. Oh, yeah. thank you. Nice things. Mum didn't improve on it later. But uh, I was quite happy wearing that. I had to buy some new things but they, what I bought it wasn't really what I what I wanted. No uh, European fashion. No. no. <laughs> Dad, it, it must have been exciting, though. I mean, the prospect of starting a, um, I mean, really being able to start again, or um, being able to start a, a whole new life. Yes, yeah, I, I uh, made some nice friends uh, from the shop where I worked. In Albury? Uh, in Albury and, and from the boarding house. They're a nice, nice bunch of uh, young people. There was a mixed boarding house. There were several girls. And, and there were two, three girls in the shop. There was quite a... And a big workshop. So I was quite happy. I was mm -hmm. busy. And, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, what was the name of the shop? Is it still there? Well, I, I don't know. We were going to stop overnight mm -hmm. just recently. And I was going to have a look with Mr. Rose's shop was. But we didn't, didn't have the opportunity. It just didn't work out. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So we just drove. The bus, uh, interstate bus, drove through Dean Street. That was the main street. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, I didn't see it, so that was it. Mm -hmm. So how long did you work in Albury for? While well, I was in Albury, I got a letter from a friend of mine whom I know, whom I knew from Czechoslovakia. Not personally, but I knew his firm and um, He uh, took his wife, children, uh, from Czechoslovakia, uh, and got a visa for Yugoslavia for holiday. And they packed the car and went to uh, Austria, and then they declared themselves as mm -hmm. refugees. And uh, he was representative of uh, several factories, several Swiss factories uh, in Czechoslovakia, and 
so it was quite easy for him to go to Czechoslovakia, to Switzerland. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, we met in Switzerland and uh, just talked about the future. Uh, they were originally going to the United States, but then it was easier to go to Yugos to uh, Aus Australia. So they went, and uh, he found out where I was, where I worked, and told me that they were coming and they were going to stay in Sydney. Uh, would I like to go into partnership with him? But he was going to import watches and mm -hmm. and. Uh, uh, really? He offered me the partnership with not not much outlay, and we bought a shop. Well, I had to go to meet him. Mm -hmm. They stayed in a holiday flat in Narabeen, which is a northern suburb of Sydney. And uh, I went to see him and spent the weekend with them. And we sort of, we talked it over, what we're going to do. Mm -hmm. well, I was quite happy with the arrangement, so... I went back to Aubrey and he found a shop. It was a little place in Hunter Street. Uh, similar. Uh, a small place uh, it, in Lawn Street. It was just as small as what I had in Lawn Street. And we used to take turns. Uh, one week I would stay in the morning talking to customers. And uh, uh, and in the afternoon I used to do the watches. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was the other way around the following week. That's how it went for a few years and... Was it successful? It was very successful. Mm -hmm. We advertised on the radio and... Um, uh, so how many years... How long did you... Oh, you did that. So you were in Albury for um, about a year or how long? Uh, um, So I stay I arrived in Albury about middle of January and stayed there uh, over the winter because I used to go skiing with friends from uh, the boarding house mm -hmm. Buffalo. Once I went to Kosciuszko but that was um, and uh, we start when I left over it to join Charlie. Uh, about October, mm -hmm. November, because we were open just before Christmas, and that was a boom time. Mm -hmm. And uh, we were doing very well. We imported uh, Charlie, organized some rep, uh, agencies from Swiss factories. We imported watches and, and watch bands. And we, we used to go to there were camps of migrant camps. Mm -hmm. and or on weekends and sell those watches and on time time payments and I mean, we were doing quite well. Mm -hmm. And you were doing repairs as well. I was doing repairs and Charlie was the businessman. We used to sit in uh, one of the bedrooms when we uh, they bought a house. 
Oh, was this Charles and Stanker? Charles and Stanker, his oh, wife. Right. And you, li you lived with them? I lived with them. Well, first of all, uh, they, they had a flat in Randwick, and then they bought a house in Lane Cole, and I stayed with them mm -hmm. all that time. And did that work, having um, living with your business associate? I mean, did you remain good yes, friends? Yes, good friends, yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. And um, then, yes, if you want to oh, oh. mm -hmm. so what did you, what else? Uh, how, how long did you stay in that business with Charles? Oh. Now you met Mum over that period, oh, didn't you? I met Mum very early. I, uh, in the, uh, I was living with them in Randwick. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, it was one sun Saturday afternoon. Uh, and the Ebners, the Charles and Stenko, went somewhere, and I was on a loose end, and I went to the went to town, went to Pitt Street, and all oh, that was the town, mm -hmm. the city, and uh, went to the pictures in the afternoon, and uh, after the pictures I heard about uh, that Trocadero was the place yes. to meet people, it was a dance hall, so after the pictures, I huh, had a bit of bit of uh, dinner and uh, went to have a look at this Trocadero place. Mm -hmm. And uh, there, oh, those girls danced, but it doesn't seem to. I didn't seem to impress anybody. Nobody, no, none of the girls want to dance with me. About ten girls refused to dance with me. But and then I, I saw uh, a, a girl, she was in a stout dress, stout nice frock, and she was so nice. And I Did you think one was very attractive? Very attractive. Uh, so I went to dance with her, went and asked for a dance, and she accepted, and we went and danced. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And well, that was the start of Big Romance. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Very pretty and had a lovely figure. Yeah. <laughs> Very pretty. Didn't. <laughs> <laughs> Did you record that? Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, Dad, um, but had you been to many dances in Australia? No. Well, this was your first dance in Australia that you'd uh, been to. Yeah, I went to uh, a dance in Albury once. Mm -hmm. I didn't like the girls. <laughs> <laughs> so what was it about Mum that attracted you to her? Oh, she was very pleasant. And, and uh, then I found out that she was from New Zealand and, and it was very interesting to me mm -hmm. to not being an Australian and so she was with another girl and, and uh, I asked her to, to come out to go out with me the following weekend accepted and so we met him. and then I took her to Princess which was a uh, very flesh dark club and she accepted and uh, well, that was the beginning that was the beginning and I was quite uh, when later after several beautiful weekends she told me that she has to go back to New Zealand uh, to uh, have uh, to Shelley's wedding, I was very taken back, and I thought, oh, well, this will be the end. 
Mm. And it was. But, but Dad, you sound like you were um, you were quite persistent. You, I mean, you knew that this was a re- that this was a that, relation that, that was, you wanted to that was the be right with Mum. girl for me. Mm. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. So what um, what did you do when Mum went back to New Zealand? Well, just kept working. Just kept working and mm-hmm. building up the business and and uh, oh. Did you know many Czech people in in Sydney? Oh yes. Well, uh, by that time, Stenka used to go to. Uh, she had a friend. She was a a beautician, and there were other Czech women. Uh, gathering there, and uh, she used to go to the, uh, to the cross, where there were Czech restaurants, and I, mean, I used to go with them when Mum went home. Then you see, I used to go with them, and sort of mm. killed time until. Uh, Mum came back. But mum, mum may not have, may not have come back. I if mean, I wasn't persistent. Well, I mean, mum, <laughs> mum, um, she, I mean, she could have ended up staying in New Zealand. Oh, she could have. Yeah. But I was persistent, and mm-hmm. she came back. Mm-hmm. Oh, she took the opportunity to ask Barry to come, and and then on the boat she met Jean, and. Mm. Mhm. And then she. Uh, I found a place for her to stay in stay in Lane Cove and with Mrs. Brown, and she found a, uh, a friend. She found a girl. But she was living already there, mm-hmm. Lenora. They became friendly. And she had a job in Lane Cove. Mm-hmm. And you you were still in the business with um, Charles. Yes. At this time, mm. Dad, um, oh, this is. D- have you kept in contact with them, D- or what? What happened? Did you have a? Uh, you just lost. You just um, lost contact. It was when I started. Oh, Charlie had all sorts of ideas how to make money, and he formed another partnership with uh, in trucking business, and he spent. Uh, Started spend more time with that partnership, and then he started another business, uh, jellied eels, and I wasn't included in those ventures. Mm-hmm. And thank goodness I wasn't, because every one of them folded, and uh, he was spending so much time. Uh, with these other ventures that I didn't like it. I said, well, why am I spending so much of my time doing watches and going to the shop? Uh, you chase other business for yourself. Mm-hmm. And was it a 50-50 share that you had or was he the major? No, it was 50-50. Yeah. So, uh, we had another, uh, that was the last venture we opened a shop in Roseville, and uh, that's where the trouble started. Uh, he was neglecting the shop and, and did his correspondence, did his uh, account, and, and did his book for the other shops, and well, wasn't it? Doing uh, what he what he was supposed to do, so I I offered him uh, that I take over my half. I pay uh, pay him off for mm-hmm. the half, and and um, he said, "All right." We agreed on the price. And um, 
on one weekend I was going to go there on Saturday morning to uh, clean up and um, start on Monday on my own mm -hmm. and I had all tools in the car prepared to go down and telephone rang and uh, he said oh, uh, all those businesses have are not doing well at all and uh, I've decided not to sell uh, uh, sell my heart. Mm -hmm. and, uh, uh, so what can I do? So I start started open the shop in Mossman. So you sold your heart? To no, no I didn't. Held on to it. No, I didn't. I hold on to it. And um, I had uh, I opened this shop. It was quite good. I had a, a girl there. Oh, my uh, wife, uh, Leslie, went to work there. She left the job, Elizabeth French, and went to work in Spit Junction. Mm -hmm. And uh, she didn't like it because it was so so slow. Mm -hmm. But she was doing, she sold few watches. But it was so slow that she said, oh, I'm going back to hairdressing. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I had a nice young girl who was looking after the shop while I went back to uh, Hunter Street to do my half. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In those days, we, we alternate full day, and uh, all that was eventually this did happen. And you sold? You both sold? Uh, oh. oh, we had to get out. Mm -hmm. We had to get out because uh, the, the building was sold and uh, the little, little shop was taken uh, they were the, the shop that was a milk bar and it was part of it and we had to just get out because the new owner of the milk bar uh, didn't, uh, was going to take over the space mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so we had to get out so uh, go on and uh, he opened a similar little place up in the vineyard station in York Street and I By then, I uh, I opened a shop in Queen Square, which was uh, the border of a park opposite. Was almost opposite Davy Jones. Mm -hmm. As and well as the shop in Spit Junction. Yeah, this was another no, shop. No, that that was. I sold that, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, at the shop in uh, Queen Square. It was a bigger shop. It was a slightly bigger shop. Mm -hmm. But then uh, Charlie came to, with this crazy idea. Well, it wasn't crazy when when I. In the beginning, it was quite a lucrative uh, part of business to start a restaurant. Mm -hmm. So we bought this uh, restaurant across. It was a nightclub. What year was that, Dad? Oh. Yeah. Yes, uh, it was about 1957 when we opened. And, mm -hmm. uh, it was doing quite well, but uh, then the sort of mini crisis developed in Australia, and uh, I don't uh, any kind of financial. Uh, yeah, well, the economy yeah. started to uh, drag, and so the affected first was affected the 
nightclub. Mm -hmm. People didn't have the money to spend them. So that was the time where I started to think about leaving Australia. It was so much trouble. The nightclub wasn't doing well. And about the jewelry shop, Queen Square. Oh, I was. Um, I go. The, I went there during the week, during the day, and um, every third day I went to the nightclub. Mm -hmm. Three partners. So every third day we alternate. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. I used to come home at two, three o'clock in the morning and uh, went to the shop to do the watches. I had I had a young fellow who looked after us. He was an apprentice, but he was very, very good. So I could a very trustworthy young mm -hmm. fellow. And uh, so I could leave him in charge. But it wasn't the same as if I was there. Mm -hmm. So both businesses suffered. And, uh, and you must have been exhausted, Dad. At the end, I, I was was so I was so tired, and I wasn't feeling well. And mm -hmm. I thought, oh, this is not going to be any good. Mm -hmm. So the Mom and I decided to take the bags. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But you stayed with Charles and Stinker over that time when he, um, when you were going to buy the his share of the shop, and then he decided not to. Mm. Or oh, we didn't. We didn't part with uh, uh, bad feelings. Mm -hmm. After Dad came to New Zealand, he lost. Con he didn't keep in contact with Charles. That was that was really the the end when he left. Charles ripped some money off from Dad just before he came to New Zealand. Um, he'd lent Charles several thousand dollars worth of um, clocks, etc., and just wrote a little note. And anyhow, um, Charles would never never give it never give it back. And at that, when they came to New Zealand, Dad. As far as Dad was concerned, that was it. But Charles used to write to him and say that um, you know, come, when you come back, was buy beauty or buy hair salon. Salon Stinker can work in the beauty parlour, but Mum can be the hairdressers. But Dad just just never replied. And um, Stinker sounds like she was a real sex pot. She used to come in when Dad was working at his um, at his workshop. And open her dressing gown and ask Dad if she'd lost any weight and she'd be naked underneath. And she'd ask Dad to go in and wash her back, which he used to do, but he'd just wash her back and then walk out again. And she once told him, and she used to say that men's sperm was very good for her skin and she used to get it and um, rub it on her face. Apparently just over the time when they had the nightclub and before Dad left and came to New Zealand, she hadn't fell pregnant and had an abortion and Charles thought it was his child but it didn't, he didn't end up being, being it and they also got a lot of work because um, Charles was a lawyer which apparently he used to use as cleverness over dad anyhow um, one of the representatives one of the Czech representatives of the company that he worked that Charles used to work for in Czechoslovakia, who was based in Sydney, was a Mr. Altman, who was Jewish, and he had, was very involved and high up within the Jewish community there. They thought Jew, um, Stenka was a Jew, and because of that, Dad and Charles got a lot of work from the Jews, and they bought things, and they used to bring their watches to be repaired, and apparently in those days there was a lot of money to be made in repairing watches. Um, 